Shadow Lowland Sands actually into Steelix a great lead. The opponent stays in. Farm up some energy, then attempt to catch onto Pidgeot. Zero Felro says no. Welcome back to the channel. We're getting towards the business end of the season. It's time to hit your goals. And today we are showcasing again, in my opinion, the most busted core in the Open Ultra League. Shadow Lowland Sands slash Ankler Fable. I've already recently showcased this core with Shadow Zapdos as the third and my friend Noob Giratine was able to go all the way to Legend. I actually used the Shadow Alolan Sanchez Clefable, Shadow Zapdos line as well, and I went 23 and 2. That's just how busted it is. However, today we're going to be taking a look at Giratina as the third. These battles are submitted to the channel by fellow content creator Zera Felrose. Huge shout out to him, he's linked in the title. But without any further ado, let's get into the battles. And in game one, we pick up a great lead. Shadow Alolan Sanzash into Gliscor. The opponent farm up some energy. Send out Jealous and Zera Felrose landed drill run. Number one and Shadow Sanzash as there's plenty more of where that come from. We fire off the second one, drawing a protection. Then we see the pivot into Clefable. Zera Felrose has wiggled himself into a very dominant position. Landing the drill run has put this big jellyfish into Moonblast range. Clefable so, so thick. We absorb the Shadow Ball. Tank the Surf, return fire with the Moonblast. The opponent already down one shield. Moonblast goes unshield. We maintain alignment and shield advantage. The opponent has the big tin can Reggie Steel in the back, but Clefable still not done. Fires off the Moonblast. Moonblast is resisted and, to be honest, does pretty much fuck all. However, the opponent going to have a tough time of lock on farming down the Clefable. This big pink fluffy thing is very, very thick. The second Moonblast lands. The opponent then pivot out into Gliscor and get themselves a nice wing attack farm down. Zera Felrose does have two Protect Shields, two high behind. However, he might need them as the opponent has energy here, there, and every fucking where. Gliscor is absolutely loaded. Reggie Steel has 100 energy. So if you're wondering whether you want to use Zapdos or Giratina as the third, Giratina absorbs all of that energy. We then see the pivot into Sandstash. We lose CMP. We're going to respect the potential Earthquake. We get baited with the Night Slash. However, this double super effective Ice Punch should be forced in the final shield off the opponent, which it does. The opponent now all shields down. Zara Farrows needs to be mindful of an attempted catch. And the opponent makes that catch back onto the Tin Can. And suddenly things get interesting. We see the last Protect Shield deployed on the Focus Blast. The opponent now has 25 residual energy Focus Blast. Cost 75, so Zara Felrose can throw five. Throw the Drill Run on the CMP tie. Drill Run vanquishes the opponent. Back to their Pokeball back out. Comes Gliscor. We attempt to make a catch onto Giratina. No such luck. However, Giratina so, so thick. Night Slash doesn't quite knock us out. We've got the Dragon Claw locked and loaded. And we're off to a 1-0 start. GG's and thanks for playing. I get a lot of people ask me how I count lock-ons. I'll be honest, I don't. I count my own fast move. So for example, in the last battle, as we're using a Shadow Claw user, which is a two-turn move, for every Shadow Claw you throw, they're going to get two lock-ons. If you're going to use a three-turn move like Snarl or Hex, for every fast move you throw, they're going to get three lock-ons. However, getting back into the commentary, that's enough school for now. We lead Shadow Sandslash into Galvantula, the most pesky spider of them all. This matchup's playing out essentially how all Galv matchups play out. We fired off the Ice Punch, the opponent committed that shield, the opponent baited us with a lunge. Surprise, surprise. We then YOLO'd the drill run, looking to land the heavy hitting move. The opponent shielded twice and then took us out with the discharge. However, Zera Felrose has one protect shield, two high behind, and Galvanja can do absolutely nothing to Giratina. I've got a sneaky feeling I know what's in the back. So the opponent is trying to force alignment at all costs and look to RPS the back line. Do you want to know why Shadow Sand slash Clefable is such a good call? Because if the opponent's got Mandibuzz and Jellison in the back, which they do, Clefable is about to feast. If you're wondering how I knew the back line, well, I actually shoutcast 35 minutes of the Galvantula, Jellison and Mandibuzz action. The team was actually created by my mate Finn Joey. You can see them battles on my channel. Just look for Galvantula, gaining 650 elo, and you'll see exactly how your two shield and RPS the back line. However, this opponent isn't going to be RPSing shit as we fire off the Moonblast, taking care of the Jellyfish. The opponent playing it out. However, trainer, you, sir, are about to get fucked up. The opponent fires off the aerial ass. Clefable laughs at that damage. Zera Felrose throws one fairy win and the Moonblast. Moonblast with same type attack bonus hits for heavy neutral damage. Even one more aerial ass won't take us out. The opponent realises they're fucked and concede the match. Moving on to the next one. A bit of a tricky lead. Shadow Alolan Sandslash into Shadow Swamper. The opponent can one shot us with an earthquake. Zera Felrose farms up to the drill run baits with the ice punch. The opponent shows no respect. 
We see the instant shield deployed from Zera Felrose, respecting a potential earthquake. The opponent masturbates us with the Hydro Cannon. They then go for another Hydro Cannon. Shadow Lowland Sunslash could survive one, but Zera Felrose looking to keep his Sunslash super healthy. We over farm, fire off. One more Ice Punch. Ice Punch will be lethal. We see the opponent commit that shield with NCS Savage Catch of the Hydro Cannon onto our damage sponge, Giratina. Hydro Cannon does absolutely nothing. The opponent now pivot out into Mandibuzz. You'd think this is a good matchup for Mandibuzz. However, Giratina hasn't been one of the top meta threats all the way since fucking preseason for no reason. The Dragon Breath Ancient Power variant of Giratina are actually pretty neutral here. We tank a foul play no problem whatsoever. Dragon Breath always adds up and we can hit back for super effective Ancient Power. The second Ancient Power gets the opponent into the red. The opponent's gonna have to throw. They can't farm down. The opponent attempt the farm down, get scared. Dump energy and Giratina, as always, has been a right fucking pest, putting in a whole heap of work. We send out Sandslash. The opponent attempts to make a catch. However, no such luck. Zero Felrose gets the farm down. Back out comes Mandibuzz. Trainer, what do you have in the back? The opponent throws the foul play. It isn't lethal. Sandslash now absolutely loaded. The opponent's final Pokemon is Tentacle. And there's no need to bait. We throw the first drill run. Forcing a protect shield. The second drill run is going to land. And now Clefable is going to have to counter this Tentacle. We pivot out into Clefable. Clefable super thick. The opponent unlikely to have Sludge Wave. Moment of truth time. It's just a skull that doesn't get the job done. Zera Felrose looking to farm up to the back-to-back -back Meteor Mashes. Meteor Mash is resisted, to be honest, unless we've got Psychic, everything's resisted, but we really don't give a flying fuck. The second one is thrown on the CMP tie. Clefable wins the charge move priority event, and we take that game. In the next battle, we see the Shadow variant of Sandslash into its regular cousin. This is essentially what I like to call the bait game. Zera Felrose farms up, throws the drill run, loses CMP. We're calling the bait. The opponent full sends the drill run. Likewise, Zera Felrose is going to return fire with his own drill run. The opponent commits a shield. Zera Felrose doesn't really have a great response for an opposing sand slash. We farm up, lose CMP, getting him going for a very risky bait. Zera Felrose choosing the shield up the drill run. I don't really like this bait, to be honest. Because even if we land the drill run, it's not going to be lethal. And the opponent actually calls it. No! The opponent CMP ties us again. Zera Felrose looks like he wants lead at all costs. We shield up the Ice Punch. Return fire with the drill run. The opponent lets it go. Zera Felrose looking to pivot into Clefable. The opponent also running the Sand Slash Clefable core and down a shield. It's a no thank you from us and we're going to move swiftly on. However, things looking more promising in the next battle. We see a great lead. Alolan Sand Slash into Steelix. The opponent farm up. Attempt to catch on Pidgeot. The opponent realises that was a terrible idea and very quickly concede. GG's and thanks for playing. Yet another pesky spider in the lead. Let's see if this opponent also looking to two shield and RPS the back line. Zero Felro strikes first with the ice punch and to my absolute surprise the opponent actually let that go. Last time Zero Felro's got baited with a lunge however he is going to call the discharge this time and we correctly shield up a discharge. Okay I see you cooking we're going to return fire one more ice punch. Ice Punch draws a Protect Shield. As Scalvanch to tank the first Ice Punch, Zero Felrose can just shield up whatever they throw and commit to the Shadow Claw Farm Down. That's exactly what we see happen. Sandslash commits to the full Shadow Claw Farm Down. The opponent sends out Obstagoon. We pivot into Clefable. The opponent is staying in and we have no Protect Shields remaining. I think we're about to get gunked. We fire off the Moon Blast. Obstagoon puts up that shield. Come on, throw the trash can trainer if you've got it. The opponent throws the trash can. Clefable shrugs it off. The opponent's got Mandibuzz in the back, but Clefable still not done. Going to fire off a Moonblast at this flying Umbreon for some nice solid chip damage. Zera Faros did bank a boatload of energy on his Sandslash. We enter back into Sandslash. Farm up, fire, Ice Punch on the CMP tie. I don't think this is lethal, is it? Ice Punch doesn't KO. The opponent's going to take us out with a foul play. However, this is probably better as we're going to get a nice run and start on energy. Dragon Breath Giratina comes in, gets the Dragon Breath farm down. It's now all down to RNG. The opponent's going to be fishing for that ever annoying boost. The opponent fires off Night Slash. Number one, do they get a boost? No, they don't. And that should just about seal the deal. Zera Felrose farming up to the back to back Dragon Claws. Obstagoon, pretty bulky in its own right. They tank the first Dragon Claw. They're even going to tank the second. However, with no boost, two Night Slashes won't be lethal. The opponent doesn't even reach a charge move. And Giratina just Dragon Breaths the shit out of everything. And we take that game.
in the next battle we see the battle of the ice types let's see if they're on charm or power to snow the opponent is on charm to be honest sand slash feast on whatever variant the opponent would like to run as always there are rose throws his charge with an optimal fast move time and he threw seven shadow claws and the drill run if you'd like to get better at this game, Zerophilus does do some coaching on Metafy. I'm old as fuck. I've got no idea what Metafy is. However, it is linked on his channel, so you can go check him out if you're looking for that coaching. Zerophilus is recognising the opponent must be super weak to Sandslash. Shield up the Psy Shock. Committed to the full Shadow Claw farm that I left at 100 energy. He then dumped the drill run at the incoming Swampert. The opponent didn't respect it. We're now going to throw an Ice Punch. The opponent's still not shielding shit. Sandslash has almost taken out two entire Pokemon. The opponent fires off the Hydro Cannon. We let it go down. We're going to be able to Dragon Breath farm down. The opponent's final Pokemon is Ampharos. With two shields, we attempt to catch a Brutal Swing onto Clefable. No such luck. We see the instant no shield from Zera Felrose. We tank the Thunder Punch. The opponent fires the next one. Back to back Clefable. Going to absorb all this energy. However, we're in danger now. We're getting Volt Switch farmed down. Zera Felrose goes to the bait as the opponent really needs to start shielding. They shield up the bait. Can we make one more move? No, the opponent gets the farm down. It's now all down to Giratina to clean up this battle. Brutal Swing lands for heavy, super effective damage. We need to be mindful the opponent might try and catch. However, when they're using a four-turn move, it should be quite easy to see coming. The opponent sends out Swampert. Swampert gets farmed down. And that is going to be all she wrote. GG's and thanks for playing. Moving on to the next battle, great lead. Our entire team does well against the Giratina. The opponent retreats into Tapu Fini. Zera Felro stays in, fires off the Drill Run. Drill Run gonna land for decent neutral damage. Tapu Fini now already down below half health. Zera Felro looks like he's happy to continue to stay in. And we're gonna see the shield deployed on the surf. Sandslash heavily outpaces Tapu Fini as it takes a six, six, then five to each Drill Run. It takes them 15 water guns to each surf. Zera Felrose even goes for a cheeky master bait in session, drawing a protection with the ice punch on the Tapu Fini. We now see the shield deployed. Can we get the Shadow Claw farm down? I don't think we can. Zera Felrose agrees. He's now firing off yet another ice punch bait. The opponent lets it go and then send out Cobalion, but Sandslash still not done. Makes the drill run. Drill run goes unshielded. Cobalion now below half health. Now we send out our Giratina. The opponent farm up some energy. Send out their own Giratina, they're running Shadow Claw. We're on Dragon Breath. We are going to be dominant in this matchup. We fire off the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw goes unshielded and we see the pivot into Clefable. The opponent still has one Protect Shield, two High Beyond, but Zera Felrose sitting very comfortably. The opponent fires off the Shadow Sneak. Clefable says, is that all you've got? And we're going for the kill shot. Moonblast draws the final Protect Shield. The opponent thinking their Giratina is the key to victory. However, we still survive yet another Shadow Sneak. The opponent's switch timer, not going to be up. We're going to reach the Moonblast. Moonblast going to vanquish Giratina. Back to their Pokeball. I'm going to be brutally honest. The opponent probably has more chance of winning the lottery or being struck by lightning than winning this game. The opponent playing it out though. Stone Edge takes us out. However, what the heck are you planning to do against this Giratina? The opponent says, I'm not going to do shit and gracefully concede the match. Moving on to the next one. Some very nice spice from the opponent, Rayquaza. The opponent pivot out into Amphros and Zera Felrose going for that Hail Mary kill shot. Does the opponent respect the damage? They do not. They near get one shot. Sandslash comfortably tanks whatever they throw. It's just a Thunder Punch. Sandslash gets the Shadow Claw farm down. The opponent going to be so, so sad as we're triple strong against Rayquaza. The opponent sends out Jellicent. Sandslash continuing to stay in. Going to fire off the Drill Run. Drill Run going to land for heavy neutral damage. The opponent probably thinking when Sandslash is out of the way, Ray Ray might go to town and sweep the back line. However, they're going to be so, so sad as we're triple strong against them. The opponent now send back out Rayquaza. Dragon Breath tearing apart the opponent. Giratina's stat product far superior. We fire off the Dragon Claw. Drawing a Protect Shield. Rayquaza now already down below half health. Rayquaza with a huge attack stat. Fire off the break and swipe. Giratina shrugs off the damage. We send out Clefable. Clefable going to be able to commit to the full Fairy Wind Farm down. We are going to respect the potential Hurricane. The opponent YOLOs the Dragon Ascent. What a cool animation, but certainly not cool enough to win this game. And the opponent concedes. Moving on to the next one. We see the Battle of the Ice Types. 
the hedgehog into the walrus. The walrus might be bigger, might be fatter, perhaps even thicker. However, we do double resist the powder snows. We farm up far off the drill run. All rain now below half health. They farm up well past an earthquake. Zera Felrose feeling brave. He's huge cojones. Call the bait and the opponent throws the double resisted bait. We don't shield shit. We then fire off the drill run on the CMP tie drill run. Doesn't quite knock out. Zera is going to shield the next move. The opponent full sends the earthquake. Shadow Sandslash is now super healthy with residual energy. Good to go. The opponent send out Charizard. Zera Felrose farms up. Buys off the ice punch just before the blast burn. Charizard tanks it on the chin, but Sandslash still not done. Says, give me that shield with ice punch number two. The opponent obliges, putting up a protect shield. Once again, Shadow Alolan Sandslash almost taking out two Pokemon. The opponent fires off the Blast Burn Vanquish and us back to our Pokeball. Out comes Giratina. The opponent's got Giratina O in the back. The Battle of Giratinas. However, on Dragon Breath, our Giratina very dominant. We fire off the Dragon Claw, forcing the Protect Shield and send out Clefable. Giratina O in Ultra League hits like an absolute truck. But despite our Fairy looking all pink, cute and fluffy, we're a pretty good damage sponge. Zera Felrose forces the opponent to dump energy. And that should be game, set and match. Zera Felrose knows he's just got to save his shield for Giratina. We come in, look for the Dragon Breath farm down and we get it. We leave with the Ancient Power. It's going to be high Charizard by Charizard. GG's and thanks for playing. And that is going to seal a very nice legend run from the very talented content creator, Zera Felrose, who's linked in the title. Make sure you go check him out. This weekend was the Pokemon Go World Championships. A huge shout out to It's Axon becoming the 2023 Pokemon Go PvP World Champion. What an incredible run. Those battles were actually featured live on Twitch. And at one stage, we had over 35,000 people watching it live, which is incredible. With that in mind, this is a great community I love being a part of. I'm hugely grateful for the recent support I've had. I've actually just hit 6K. So if you're a smaller content creator and you'd like to get a bit of limelight, not saying I'm very big, but I'd like to do my bit to give you a boost. Post some battles down below and I'll give you a shout out. However, if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button. If you're new, consider subscribing. Even if you're not a content creator and you like your battles featured on my channel, link to the battle submission form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching. And I will see you all in the next one.